Alright everybody, now I'm just showing you the new um, tape that I put on my bed. You can see my lines now. I made sure that they were a lot darker than the first one. I ran over them a few times with the pen. But you can see, like, that's pretty much dead center. It's not 100%. You can see it's a little off, just a little bit. But as long as we get it mostly center of where we're trying to get at, that's that's what we're trying to do. Because we want to make sure that our print doesn't go over here, over there, up top, to the bottom, wherever you want it. Kind of dead middle. So um, that'll help you out with future prints. Make sure that, you know, your print will go better. You can make bigger prints here. Be able to, you'll be able to utilize your whole entire bed instead of you know one small area because your prints over here in the corner or over this corner or in that corner or over there wherever it starts to print at you know I know you've been if you guys are watching these, this video you guys must have had some trouble with that or obviously you want to be watching the video so this is a real good informational video I had to find all this out on my own I didn't find any video about this so I'm trying to help you guys out so that way you can find my video and want to do something like this to help be able to use your whole print bed if you don't already know how to do so. So now I'm going to go into the Marlin part of my program here. And I'm not going to screen share as I'm using my laptop. That's why that USB cord is right there. So I'm just going to show you off of my phone. I'm using my camera on my phone right here. Anyway, I have... Um, on sticky you note know, over here in the corner, you can see that I'm my X needs to be at 3.26 and my Y needs to be at 2. So I'm gonna disconnect. Well, first I'm gonna home everything from Pronter Face. So let me just click that. You can see everything is being homed over there. So you can see everything does work how it's supposed to. And once it helms, you see uh, Z, you'll be able to see that light come on. That's my Z stop trigger. Anyway, um, so now we're going to get into Pronter Face here. I mean, not Pronter Face, but the Merlin firmware. So I'm going to have to disconnect my Pronter Face from the system bring that down and get into the Merlin software which would be hmm, ramps I got this from a, a guy who already like converted the ramps board to to the odd to the a nets um, so that's the reason why I have that right there. Um, I'll put a link in the description of where you could look at his video if you need to convert the A-Net to a Ramps 1.4 Audrino board. But um, right now I'm just using the code is what we're going to go for. So we need to go into the Audrino code. All I do is just click on that, let the Audrino load up. Just taking a second. Okay. So you can see I have tabs up here. You're going to go to, it's not on here. Oh, yeah, actually it is. Configuration.h. So you're going to want to go to that. Click that. And then all I would do is just hit Control F. So that way I could find a, the specific code. So I think it is time or travel time or let's just put travel. T-R-A-V-L-E and just hit find. So we'll go down that, to that. Okay. Now it found travel and then... I don't think that's it though. Nope, that's not it. I think it's travel. I forget. I'm gonna have to just scroll through the code real fast. It's in um let me 
see. You'll see it is inside of your end stop settings. Okay, here we go. See, as soon as you go down to end stop settings, you could do, what I did is travel limits. That's what it was. It'll highlight travel limits for you. So you could type that in. And once you can do control F, it's basically searching. You have to hit control F and you can be able to, you'll be able to hit up that search bar and it'll search for this specific. And it'll take you right to it instead of scrolling through the whole code like I was just doing. But you can see that my X is at positive 35. So what I'm going to do is, let me zoom out here a little bit. All right, so X needs to be at uh, extra plus 3.26. So instead of 35, let's add 3 to that. That'll be 38. So it needs to be 38.26. And then my Y, these are for the minimum. You don't do maximum. Maximum stays wherever your maximum should be at, which is the maximum size of your print bed, which should be like 220 around there. That's to use the whole entire print bed. That's the whole entire size. Anyway, um, so my Y needs to be an extra 2, so that will be 40 instead of 38. So 40 and then 38.26 should be where we need it at. And then you could check the code if you want by hitting verify but when you do upload it's going to check the code anyway and um, if this is your first time connecting your computer to your board whether it's the ANET board or not and you're configuring you know this is basically the Merlin software if you're configuring anything or doing anything like that I mean obviously I want to tell you guys to do this if you're not familiar with Arduino but um, you're gonna go to tools when you plug up the when you plug up your board you're gonna make sure that it's set on um, the Arduino Mega or Mega 2650 and you're gonna make sure that the processor is the 2650 mega, the Mega 2650 and my COM port for when I plugged it into the USB is the communications port to the board is gonna be six for mine you have to check yours and how you would check yours is you would go to um, start menu right here and then you're gonna go to computer and you just left you'll not right click your left click and go to manage and then your management um, tab will pull up and it's, it's gonna take a second it's not my computer my laptop isn't super fast but anyway um, then you go to device manager here And then you just go down to ports and com, double click it, and you can see USB serial. Hold on, sorry about that. There it goes. USB serial com six. Okay, so I'm gonna just exit out of that real fast. All right, now I have my com port set up and all that. I have what I need my x and y to be at so now i'm just going to hit upload and down here in the corner it'll start saying upload if you have any error messages you'll see it in this black bar right here but i won't have any because i just changed two num two number positions i didn't change anything within the code itself really i just changed some positions that's all so I'll just hit upload and uh, the upload tabs right there in the corner and you can see sketch is com is complementing sketch that means it's trying to verify it too it's going to check it. You could just hit verify and it'll do the same thing, but it'll be a waste of time to do so if you're going to if it's going to verify and then it anyways and then upload it. So you might as well just hit upload. I just don't see the point of wasting any extra time. Anyway, it'll upload within a few minutes and then once it uploads your Merlin software is now loaded onto the Arduino board again cuz basically whenever you change a code, you're uploading this software onto your Arduino Mega and that's redoing the whole code really but you're not really redoing the code yourself but you're basically re-uploading a new program so it's always going to like reset itself and everything and you're basically doing the whole entire coding yourself even though it's already practically made you're just changing it up you're just tweaking the code but 
the Audrino isn't going to know that. It's just going to think, oh, another brand new code is being loaded into me. So, okay, done uploading. And you can see over there the Merlin part it just like flashed and said Merlin on there. And um, you can actually do a lot inside of here. I'm not going to do everything and show you everything, but like inside the code, there's plenty of stuff you can do to tweak stuff like power management like how how high your thermistor can go and stuff like that so i mean i would just say if you're having some other issue just to google it and try to find it yourself i can't run through everything about the coding because i'm not a complete expert on it i just know what i need to i just learn what i need to learn for what i'm having a problem with so anyway now that i got that uploaded now we're gonna go back to prompter face now see the reason why I had to take disconnect prompter face, you can't have this program communicating with your Arduino while it's trying to communicate and upload from this one. And that's just not gonna work. So you could leave this one open because we're done uploading if you want to, just because you know you, maybe your stuff is still off a few cent like millimeters or whatever. Um, you could tweak all that yourself and leave that open and then just always have to disconnect from here. So now all I gotta do is hit connect again because it's on the same COM port. You see it loaded and everything. Everything's fine. And um, we're going to set my heat. This is for ABS because that's what I print with. That's why I don't have a fan on my stuff. If you haven't noticed, the only fan I have is on the front of my extruder to keep the temperature at this temperature that I have set here at 240. And my bed is going to be set at 110, but I don't actually set that. I just set it to heat up to that amount but I never even let it heat up to that amount because the program itself once you get the the print that you want you can set the heat within your print of your g-code so basically I set mine this one this print right here is at 95 degrees so it's gonna go like 15 less than this and um but it's still going to be at 240 as that's what I have the print file set for. So the print file will be at 240 at 95 degrees. And it's running at a very fast rate because I was testing out the speed, which is at, I think, 100. I think I have it at 100 MMS. So anyway, um, now that we have that, I'm going to hit uh, I'm gonna hit this right here to heat up my extruder and to heat up my bed. I have to set both of them because they're two different heaters. And you can always shut them off if you want to or you could like type in the number that you want if you want to. It's all up to you. Just never go past 110 because that's not, not, I mean for your heat bed you never want to go past 110 because that's not good for your heat, your heat bed. And you never want to go past 245 for your extruder. But um, I wouldn't even recommend that. I've seen a guy do it at 245, which is, you know, that's his preference. Me, personally, I will just keep mine at 240, because it works fine with 240. Anyway, you can see over there that the program is working. It's heating up at 240 at 110, because that's what we have it set to. It's, uh, this right here is what the heat is currently, and that's what it's trying to go to, and that's the heat currently of the bed, and that's what it's trying to go to right there. And you can see on the bottom right there it says heating. And you can even change the way, the how it comes on. There's a lot of different things you could tweak. But if you're just trying to get your prints to look good and center it, that's the main re reason why I'm making this video. Um, you can see that the um, print that I have here is highlighted in green. But that's because I just got done printing and showing you where my heat bed was off at. So, you know, I had to, um, they already printed all this. It will turn back to red when you, when you first upload the file to, to here, um, it'll be red and then it'll highlight green whenever it's done drawing that out on your printer over there. So once it starts to print, all these blocks start turning green instead of being red because that's what already just got done printing. It, fo it follows along when you're printing, so that's good. And it shows you how much, how long it takes and how much time it's going to take and stuff like that. You just, all this stuff is just, you have to play with it. It's not a, it's an exact science if you know what you're doing. But if you don't know, the best thing for you to do is just test it. Keep testing and like keep um, tweaking it. 
I'm gonna close this because it makes my prints go faster. I mean, heat up faster. My bed will heat faster with this closed. I don't need it open. And you can see the bed is always gonna take the longest to heat up. Um, there's nothing I could really do about that exactly. I mean, there is some little stuff you can do, but no coating really involved too much. There's more of like adding heater like traps basically like, to conceal the heat within itself. So like to heat up faster, I've seen people add like aluminum, like tape and stuff like that and like fiberglass stuff, all kind of stuff to kind of help the bed heat up faster because you're dealing with elements too. Like depending on how cold your room is and if you have a fan on it, you know, stuff like that, it, it all varies. But um, this print will only take about four to five minutes because I have it set at that uh, fast rate, which was which is at 100 mms. Um, whenever you do Kira and you splice the G code from whatever 3D um, STL or whatever 3D model you put on there, um, usually the fact the basically the default speed is at 60 mms. So I'm already doing 40 plus more than that. So that's the reason why, like, the faster your, the faster you have it set at, the faster your prints will come out. But you got to make sure that your printer is, a, is able to handle those type of speeds. So, like, you know, I wouldn't recommend somebody that just got their A-Net set up to do speeds like that because it will throw your print off or can, like, overheat your motherboard or overheat the steppers stuff like that it all just depends on what your setup is if you feel like you can do it and you want to test it out do something small you know test it with a small print cube i wouldn't even do a 20 millimeter print test cube i would do like a 10 or a 5 just to see how fast it could print between you know 60 mms and 100 mms or 120 or whatever speed you set your stuff at is all up to you you would know how fast your printer can go because you're the one using your printer me i've tested 100 mms plenty of times with the factory a net board with different um upgrades to my a net so i know for sure it can handle it Anyway, I'm at 84 degrees right now, 85, just hit 85, so it's just going to take a second. I'm going to stay recording so that way you guys can see all this. Actually, I may just cut it out and wait because I'm losing, I only got like a few more minutes left on my camera here. Um, yeah, I'm going to cut it out and then I'll cut back in when I get set up. 